Well, there have been two events in the last week that have kind of brought up issues of, you know, not necessarily free speech issues, but what's appropriate to say to the media. And they've also brought up the prevalent topic of race, which is still huge in America. First, there was the Don Imus scandal, in which she referred to the women's Rutgers women's basketball team as a bunch of nappy-headed hoes, which is an incredibly offensive remark. And then a little lesser-known story, but I think still very important, was the fallout from the Duke rape case, in which the three white players from Duke were acquitted, and now there are talks of them suing the district attorney who went after them after an African-American woman uh, accused them of raping her at a party. Uh, I think, like, you know, both instances show that race is still very prevalent. I mean, um, Imus's remarks were completely, I mean, they were completely derogatory, not only to African Americans, but to women. And there was huge fallout, and I think that's a real positive step in this country that, you know, African American leaders were able to unite and put enough pressure for advert sponsors to withdraw their ads from the show and then for them eventually get fired. Um, you know, obviously you have the right to have free speech, but you also are still accountable for that speech. And I think, you know, in a public domain, when you say something like that, you're going to have a lot of fallout. Um, with the Duke rape case, which was one of the biggest stories from last year, um, you know, the district attorney who was originally going to prosecute those players is now possibly going to be sued for, I think, defamation of their reputation because... While his legal actions uh, were completely, you know, in the norm and, you know, not out of line, he referred to the players as a bunch of hooligans and made a lot of derogatory comments before all the facts of the case were made. And that was a case of him really jumping on a group of, of rich white young men whose behavior was still completely intolerable uh, and, and disgusting, you know, the emails that they wrote and the fact that the whole party went down at their place. Uh, it was, you know, they're, they're still, I wouldn't call them young men of character, but it's interesting that now they are not only been acquitted, but might have the chance to countersue the person who was coming after them. Um, you know, it, it's great that in both instances free speech was allowed, you know, there's no government interference, but, you know, speech, especially in the media today, it's still something that always has to be examined. I mean, when are you crossing the line and what are the fallouts? Um, you know, when can you sue someone for defaming, you know, reputation or, or slander or, you know, just, you know, insulting someone's character? Uh, those are all issues that still need to be worked out. It's probably going to be worked out on an ad hoc case by case basis. I really hope that the district attorney doesn't get sued because, you know, while he, uh, his comments were out of line, you know, maybe he shouldn't be district attorney, but I would hate to see that go to court suing over reputation. Um, especially, I just think that would be a little over the top, but the Iris fought seems very appropriate. Uh, it's great that uh, he was fired, and um, it, it just, it's very interesting. I mean, and still, you know, moving forward, and in, in a year when you have two serious presidential contenders, one's an African-American male, the other is a, a female, and both would be the first from their demographic to make it to the presidency, that issues of uh, misogyny and racism are still very prevalent in this country and, you know, occur daily.